In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the hinge joint node in Godot, quite possibly the most mysterious node I have ever seen. So here's an example scene that I've set up. This cube right here is a static body node and it's not meant to move around. This cube on the other hand is a rigid body and it reacts to physics like any object in real life would. If we run the scene, you'll see that the rigid body cube falls and the static body cube stays floating in the air. And that's because that's the way we set things up. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on the main node and I'm going to add a hinge joint. And we're gonna move it so that it's somewhere in between both of these boxes right here, say like that. So what exactly does a hinge joint do? Well, the name should give you a hint. And basically a hinge joint is exactly that, it's a hinge, but let me demonstrate it for you. If you click on the hinge joint node on the right in the properties, you'll see this joint section right here and under this nodes tab you'll see node A and node B. With the hinge joint you get to connect two objects in the game together and then it acts as a hinge between the two objects. So for example node A if we click assign here we could say we want to attach it to the static body in our scene and for node B we want to attach it to our rigid body. Watch what happens when we run the game now. The rigid body cube swings through the air like it's on a hinge. But that's because it is. Now let's look at some ways that we can manipulate the hinge. If we go to the right under hinge joint and you click on the angular limit tab, you'll see all of these options here. For now, all we want to do is click enable. Now let's run the scene and see what happens. The cube, it swings like normal until it hits a certain spot and then it just stops in midair. And the reason why this happens is because we enabled a angular limit of the swing. So in this case, the upper limit of the swing is 90 degrees and the lower limit of the swing is negative 90 degrees. So if we were to change this to say 180 and then run the scene again, you'll see that the cube swings pretty much freely. You'll also see these other options like bias, softness, and relaxation. Now I've messed around with all of these options here trying to see how they affect the swing and they don't actually seem to do anything. And so for now, what I would recommend you do is keep these as is. If any of you have a better idea why these things are here and why they don't seem to be working for me, let me know in the comments down below. So now let's mess around a bit. What happens if we take the rigid body node and we change its type to a kinematic body? Let's run the scene and find out. Nothing happens. And in general, what I've found is that you really don't want to be using kinematic bodies with hinge joints since they don't really seem to interact at all. So let's go ahead and change this cube type back to a rigid body. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want to show you another interesting thing that you can do with hinge joints. On the right, you'll see a tab called motor. Let's check the enable box and run the scene and see what happens. Now, the hinge is exerting its own rotational force on the cube, and so it's rotating in a circle. So now we can start messing with the motor properties. For example, you'll see a property called target velocity, and this is sort of like the maximum speed you want the motor to turn. So let's say we set this to something higher, like 10. Let's run the scene and see what happens. Now the cube moves a lot faster. And there's another property called max impulse, and this is how fast your motor gets up to its maximum speed. So let's increase this to 10 as well, and let's see what happens. Now the cube reaches maximum speed pretty much instantaneously. That's because the acceleration has been increased. Now let's look at one more property on the hinge joint. Under this tab called collision, you'll see something called exclude nodes. By setting this to on, what this does is it makes the two nodes that you've connected to the hinge not interact with each other. This is why if you run the scene, the rotating cube passes through the cube that isn't moving. But if we were to turn this off and run the scene, watch what happens. The cube stops moving when it collides with another object. Turn it back on, run the scene, and the cubes pass through each other once again. So you might have noticed that in all of our demonstrations, the cube rotates like this. And that's because if we look closer at the hinge, you'll see that the hinge rotates along the hinge's Z axis. If you wanted to change the way the hinge rotates, all you have to do is click on transform and rotate the hinge on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Now you see that the hinge has changed orientation. And so if you run the game, you'll see that the cube rotates in a different direction. And it doesn't have to be 90 degrees. You can do 45 degrees. Run the scene and see what happens. But what if you don't want the hinge to rotate only on one axis? Well, there's a solution for that too. There's actually another type of joint node called a pin joint, which doesn't lock the swinging in one particular axis. I encourage you to experiment with it on your own and see how it works. And that's just a small demonstration of the power of joint nodes. 
In order to program a cube to behave in this way, it would require a lot of complicated math. And most people just don't have the know-how to do that. And so what the hinge joint does is it allows you to have this kind of complex behavior fairly easily. Anyways, I hope this tutorial has helped clear up what exactly the hinge joint is and what it does. If you're still confused and you have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Don't forget to join the Discord. And if you like the video, like it, subscribe it, share it, bell it, and comment it. Thank you. Have a nice day.